also recognize, just as it has been in the United States for Jamaica, one of the issues that has been presented as an issue that is economic in the way of its impact has been the pandemic. So to that end, we are announcing today also that we will assist Jamaica in COVID recovery um, by assisting in terms of the recovery efforts in Jamaica that have been essential to us and what is necessary to strengthen not only uh, the, the, the issue of public health, but also the economy. I got a haircut done. Let's see here. Ooh. Only got a haircut. Oh, yeah. Look at you. Oh, my goodness. Like school picture day. Look yeah, at you. Yeah, yeah. No, it feels great. The first time you take a shower again, I'm like, oh, this is freedom. This is what freedom it, feels like. It's true, yeah. When you get it away <sighs> from your ears. Ooh. Yeah, it feels great. Uh, anyway, well, uh, gentlemen, uh, Chapo here, Thursday, March 31st. Got to say, it's been a long road. It's been a long road but we finally made it. And by that, I mean Morbius is coming out tomorrow. Thank God. Yeah. We Morbius. can all enjoy uh, Morbius. Morb. I feel, I feel like, you know, the country's been holding its breath since Morbius was announced up yeah. until, you know, now. Because it's like, we've had the rug pulled a bunch of times uh, by the pandemic, by wars, by everything. Morbius has been delayed. The premiere was delayed. And even though people told me it was coming out today... I didn't really believe it until I saw it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it just seems impossible that we could have anything. In, in frickin' 2022, anything is as uh, good as a Morbius premiere actually happening. Do you guys know that um, I actually heard that there has been a truce all over Ukraine so everyone can watch Morbius? Everyone is watching Morbius on Pirate Bay. Yeah, it's like, it's like it's Christmas like, Christmas Day, Christmas yeah. Day in the trenches. Yeah, yep. everyone's watching. He, he's the living vampire. He's a, he's a living vampire. And, you know, like, he, he he's going to take down the bat. That's all I know. He's absolutely taking down the bat. Goodbye. Goodbye, Batman. I don't see how Batman survives against Morbius. Because it's like, what what's Batman's main advantage on, you know, crooks? It's that he's a bat. He has yeah. the powers of a bat. And mm -hmm. that he can come from the dark and do all the things that a bat does. Well, what happens when a guy is more of a bat than him? Yeah. Mor Morbius mm -hmm. not only has the powers of a bat, he's friends with several actual bats. Yeah. He's got no chance. Yeah. And, you know, like, I just think it's good that we have, we got, we got, a, got, a, got, a, got a blockbuster franchise in Morbius. I mean, this is only Morbius 1. There's going to be plenty more Morbs to come. Uh, it's going to be more, it's year after year. We're going from Morb to Morb here. Um, but I think it's just good that, you know, Hollywood has a new franchise that doesn't depend on some actor that's like problematic or canceled, you know, and Jared Leto yeah. is just a good, a good solid guy who's never done anything wrong, never will do anything wrong, never been canceled, never will be canceled. It's Morb. He's here to stay folks. Yep. He's here to stay. He's going to, he's like Robert Downey Jr. He's gold plated certified. We're going to have him for years to come morbing it up. Morbing it out. You know what? Like, you take how twisted Morbius himself is, and it's actually the inverse to how Jared Leto is in real life. Yeah. And the, that, that makes him able to play Morbius for probably the next 50 years. Right. And that's what's, that honestly speaks to what a great actor he is, that he's able to somehow conjure this dark, twisted, uh, living vampire out of, the, you know, a life that is so thoroughgoingly wholesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I just got to say, for the first time since... Yeah, probably like end of February 2020. I feel like everything's back to normal and we actually have something to look forward to again. Yep. It's been a long winter. Yep. But we, beat, we beat COVID. Uh, we're, we're now rewarded for all of our sacrifices by now entering into uh, the Morbius era. Yeah. I don't know what we'll talk about because it's like this is this is like the end of history. Yeah. I mean, what, what's, what, what's good news for Morbius is bad news for Chapo Trap House. It's true, but, you know, just... Respect to Jared and the uh, hundreds of young women who congregate around him to just, you know, uh, imbibe, imbibe the lessons of Morbius, the living vampire. Uh, they're doing great. He's doing great. Um, but, you know, we, let's, there, there's still some juice to ring out. I mean, Morbius, it, it hasn't come out yet. This is our, yeah, our society still, it's hasn't been take some time. It's going to take a little take a time. a little bit of time for Morbius to, to flow through the culture and, We've and got to complete the shift that we're all feeling, the vibe We've shift, got, as it were. 
we've got to marinate on Morbius. We've got to marinate yeah. on Morbius. But before, I mean, look, we got to give society a chance to catch up to that. But before we, before, before we're fully morbed out, um, there's still there's still a few pressing matters to uh, discuss in our current uh, political cultural sphere. Um, let's begin today talking about cocaine orgies in the House of Representatives, starring Woo! our good friend Hell on Wheels himself, Madison Cawthorn. <laughs> Madison. He uh he did a he did a no he did a no no and a no growth and that was um basically Madison Cawthorn fucked up because he started talking about all the decadent drug fueled sex parties of the Republicans and that's a no no you only you only do yeah, that about that's that. only that's that's only for Hollywood and the Democrats Republicans yes. don't do that stuff so when Never. you go on a podcast mouthing off about how people do cocaine in front of you and invite you to orgies you're gonna get some get back and you know House uh, majority minority leader Kevin McCarthy. He uh he uh he whacked him down pretty hard. He whacked him down pretty hard, and he said Madison doesn't even know what cocaine is, which I thought was a really funny way of uh, diffusing this situation. Uh, Madison did know what a key bump was, though. Uh, he doesn't know what cocaine yeah. is, but he said people do key bumps in front of him. Now I I don't know. Like I have my own theories about what's going on here. Maybe maybe you guys can fill in fill in the gaps here. But like I think this is an example of Madison was engaging, and he was team cap on this one. He wanted to sound cool on a podcast, and he wanted to tell cool stories. But in capping, I think he accidentally revealed too much truth about what actually goes on in D.C. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's hard for me to imagine people in D.C. like do, doing things that are fun and cool. But the thing is, they, they feel entitled to it because they, are, they, 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 they like to think of themselves as masters of the universe. So they get like a, a low-rent version of what people in Hollywood and Wall Street do. They, 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 need, they need a little bit of that decadence for themselves. And I don't think anyone invited Madison Cawthorn to any orgies because, you know, let's no. be honest, what the fuck is he going to do? Just watch? <laughs> Get top? <laughs> I, mean, I, do think, yeah, I mean, I do think he's a cokehead, but uh, I, I like So let, let me just see. This is, a, this is Chris Saliza writing in CNN. There's really only one question these days for North Carolina Representative Math Madison Cawthorn. Who? As in, who are the people that allegedly invited the Republican congressman to orgies in Washington? And who are the people he allegedly witnessed doing cocaine? Cawthorn's allegations resulted in House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy and House Minority Whip Steve Scalise calling him into a meeting Wednesday. I'm very disappointed. I told him he's lost my trust, McCarthy said after the meeting, according to CNN's Melanie Zanora. He has lost my trust. He's going to have to earn it back. What I think is funny about that is that None of the shit that Madison Cawthorn said leading up to this uh, did one dinged McCarthy's trust in him one iota, but uh, no, it's 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 the cocaine orgy thing that's landed him in hot water. I saw that people are like supporting a primary challenger against him over this. Yeah, like he really stepped in it. This is like the one thing you can't do is talk about like the gross leathery sex parties with like a 70 to one male to female ratio that these guys are assuredly <laughs> doing. Um, it's not an Eiffel tower. It would be like, um, it, it would be like a convention center, I guess is the best you could <laughs> the describe that. Yeah. Um, and no, it actually, uh, the, the other guy, the, hilariously, uh, the, the other, the other political figure coming to Cawthorn's defense and saying that he didn't walk back uh, his statement about cocaine orgies was Roger Stone, the guy who's probably been arranging these cocaine orgies for God knows how long. I mean, yeah, Roger I Stone's mean, like, been, been finding guy, been, been finding ex cops and military guys off Craigslist to fuck his wife for like thirty years now. I have to say, for Kevin McCarthy, if you didn't want people to think that this was real, you you wouldn't go through the trouble of like threatening his committee assignments and making everyone see that you made him cry when you spoke with him. Okay, that was insane. Like, you saw that picture yeah. of him just, like, rolling out of the meeting. His face looked totally different. It was a yeah. clone. They cloned yeah. him. Yeah, he's, they, he's, they, they took him in there. They, they gave him the Shigur bolt gun to the eyebrow, and then they put in one of the clone that they had already there. there there's a clone for all of these guys yeah. underneath the Capitol, and as soon as one of them fucks up, they just... They fucking take him out and they pop this out there and then they they just roll. He had the goo still on him. He was fresh with yes. that. Goo. He had the amniotic fluid still on him, and it looked like he was crying. But no, that was just the vat he came out yeah. of. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're going on. He here, muzzled here. with the primal forces of nature, Mister Cawthorn. Uh, McCarthy also said that when pressed, Cawthorn basically admitted he either exaggerated or made up the allegations. He did not tell the truth. That's unacceptable, said McCarthy. 
Cawthorn has still still has not commented publicly on the remarks he made in an interview with the Warrior Poet Society <laughs> podcast recently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in case yeah, you missed, you imagine, yeah, because he like made that shit up just to make those guys think yeah, he was cool. <laughs> yeah, the Warrior Poet Society. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I think he was trying to sound cool to the. I mean, come on, a warrior and a poet. Those are the two coolest things you can be. <laughs> That's and like honestly, both, that's, that's uh, like both things that Jet Li is in Hero. Yeah, <laughs> and that's why these guys, this the like the the elected wedge of the you know ultra right that's trying to uh, you know uh, take over the party will always be losers and will never succeed because at the end of the day they are deeply beholden to what fucking podcasters think of them. And as we can tell you, that is not a recipe for electoral political success. Oh yeah, I mean, look at the look at the lefty equivalents of those. 